Christmas shorts. My name's Bonnie. I'm Carol Ann. And I'm Colette. And we are airing this on December the 23rd, right before Christmas. So we decided we would share some Christmas memories. The memories that we have chosen are a favorite book, maybe as a child, as an adult, a favorite song, and our most memorable Christmases. So here we go. Carol Ann, can you tell us some of your favorite Christmas memories? Some of my favorite memories, of course, um, are around family and uh, what we do together. And as kids, one favorite book was The Wish Book. Uh, so when that came, it was each child would look through the book and circle something or even turn the page all together and say things like, that's mine, that's mine. So we had lots of fun with the wish book. Um, but the, I think one of my favorite stories and it has endured through to movies, et cetera, uh, a Christmas Carol. That was my favorite story and book. Although uh, one Christmas day, because in Newfoundland, uh, all day Christmas day, the programming on TV um, was a lineup of different movies. And I remember one Christmas day watching a movie coming on, The Wizard of Oz. I had never seen the movie uh, there wasn't anything else that we were doing at the time. So I sat down and watched the whole movie with my family. Absolutely loved it. So um, that's a special memory from a Christmas day. Uh, and other memories uh, have to do with visiting grandparents out in Bonavista Bay um, and the different traditions there, but that was sort of crossing over into my grandparents' traditions. Um, and uh, still, it was lovely. And of course, Newfoundland, so the traditions are very much um, older and um, more related to England because we were for so many years more connected with uh, England than uh, North American traditions. So for instance, never had pumpkin pie or anything like that. We didn't have Thanksgiving. Um, so <clears throat> we didn't have that, but uh, we had all kinds of lovely uh, traditions with our family and uh, love to get together. Caroline, do you have a favorite? song a favorite song at christmas time my mother uh has had uh, an organ she played the organ um and a favorite memory is sitting down with her and playing uh silent night and singing harmony uh together with her so she would sing the melody, I would sing the harmony, and uh, we were playing the song Silent Night together. And um, it was a beautiful memory and a favorite song for that reason. <laughs> Carolyn, when you brought up the wish book, oh my goodness, that is such a memory too for me when um, the wish book came in from Sears, Sears catalog, and my sister and I going through and, you know, pointing out or making our list, that was a staple. So thank you for reminding me of that <laughs> special memory. Colette, do you have some special memories that you'd like to share with us? Maybe a book, a song, a special Christmas day? When I was a child, we would always go to Cornwall to be with my mom's side of the family. And I remember 
um, it was it was lovely because it's the only time we really got to see all our cousins in that and they were all musical so I mean any kind of um, a musical instrument you can imagine even to the spoons um, was played and at, at my Mimere Mimere Rivette's chair she would have she literally danced so much in her chair that she wore out the cushion floor <laughs> where she would be and it was just lovely it was connected but I remember there was one time that um dad was on strike and we thought it would be a very poor Christmas and the um, Salvation Army I guess got a list of those that was on strike and they and they gave toys for us and I remember there's not one of us children that can walk by a Salvation Army kettle without putting something in uh, because it's just foundational, you know, that they were there when we needed at them. So um, that was a really cool memory. My, but I have to be honest, my favorite memory is, first of all, happy birthday, Dan, because my favorite memory is bringing our son Dan home from the hospital on Christmas and we were singing Christmas carols and uh, we had gotten Amy, you know, a little, you know, uh, kitchen, little types kitchen center and everything, you know, you know, we thought it was pretty cool. So when we asked her what her favorite gift was for Christmas, she said, baby brother. And that just touched our heart. So I would say that's my favorite memories my favorite show um, is It's a Wonderful Life with Jimmy Stewart. Just um, re, um, it kind of gets me to reevaluate what my life was like and be thankful for the different things that had happened in the year. So and uh, and it's something that I share with my sister because it is one of my favorite shows. And with the grandkids, of course, the Grinch who stole Christmas and they're just doing more and more and more of that. So we enjoy that, too. Um, but um, for the songs, I love the traditional songs. I really do. Silent Night just touches me, and there's so many. But I have to share that my husband's favorite song is Grandma Got Ran Over by a Reindeer. And I told him, it's not so funny now that I'm a grandma. So we tease each other about that. But it's just fun. We started new traditions. Our, uh, we've been doing it for about four years with our, our son, Dan, that we... Um, we just didn't want to do the materialism of Christmas. We wanted to back off on that. And Dan suggested that instead of doing that, what we do through the year is have a, a special time with each other. So uh, like a date time. And one time I was supposed to go out of town with Dan to Manitoulin Island. And we were getting ready and stuff. And and I was looking at him and he was looking at me and I said, do you really want to go out of town? He goes, no. I said, well, let's hide out at your house and tell nobody. <laughs> and we did for the weekend and we loved it. We absolutely loved it. So he has special date times with his dad and then he has special date times with us. We don't do the gifts kind of thing um, together because we just decided that's not what we want. We might make stuff for each other or, you know, stuff like that. But uh, that was something that we started and really enjoy. And each year we check in with each other and we keep saying that's the best. Now we do like to eat and we're not the traditional ham or turkey. What we do is do all our favorites, all our favorites, like uh, bacon wrap, uh, water chestnuts, deep fried, or all our favorites, like meat pies, whatever we like, we bring to the table and we enjoy just munching together and watching movies. And yes, Dan, you'll get your head scratched this year too, because that's his time too. Um, so it may not be traditional, but it sure fits our family great. Those are great, Colette. Thank you so much for sharing. So as I was reflecting on some of my favorites around Christmas time, I thought of um, first the book that we looked forward to as children hearing each year. And it is a tradition of many. It's the night before Christmas. And I actually have the book 
the uh, book that we had as a child. <laughs> the pages are all worn out and tattered and torn. But um, hearing that, you know, night before Christmas went all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care and hope that St. Nicholas would soon be there. I just loved the flow of the words and uh, every year looked forward to it. Now, as an adult, um, probably, I think there's actually a date in my book back from 2014, I received a special devotional book. And um, it's called Christ in the Carols. And it is um, a 31 devotional book on Christmas with Advent. And every year on December 1st, I love um, anticipating and reading this book. It goes through every um, day a different carol and kind of the history of the carol and then a little devotional written on it. And I love the carols at Christmas time. So it fits in perfectly. And when I revisit this each year, it's like getting together with an old friend. And I, I just love it. So that's favorite books. My favorite songs, as I said, I love the hymns, um, the, the carols of Christmas. But there were certain pieces of um, music that really um, impacted me. And one of the first was... Um, a song that I heard by a Christian artist. When I became a Christian, I had never heard Christian music before. And so this song, when um, at Christmas time, is an old song by um, a Christian artist from long ago. His name is David Meese. And I had his um, Christmas album, and the song was One Small Child. And I would play that song over and over again, the impact of Jesus in my life. It just it just stirred something in me. And then um, my second song is a song that I heard in person when the LaPointe family, I don't know, Carol Ann, if you are familiar with them, they're a band from out um, east. They were visiting our local church one year. And they brought their CDs. And one of them had a song that they performed on it called Carol of the Bells. And that is one of my favorite songs, um, hearing that. And they sang it so beautifully. Um, and my last song that I mentioned is one that isn't a traditional cr Christmas song. But you know those times when you're feeling maybe melancholy colly, or sad um, around Christmas because many people don't like celebrating Christmas um, and it's a, a dark time for them. Um, this song is called Winter Song, and it's by um, Sarah McLaughlin. And if I'm having a sad time at Christmas, I put that song on. Um, now, I forgot to mention that one of my favorites as a child was mom and dad bringing out the Christmas albums, because back then, of course, they were records. And one of my favorite Christmas records was Red Skeleton. Most of you will not even remember Red Skeleton, but I do. I recall with great fondness his Christmas album that would be played every year as a child. And one particular song was kind of a song story that he told about the littlest Christmas tree. And that so impacted me. Um, and so that's a special memory. So um, I have three special memor memorable Christmases that I'd like to share. The first one was when I was a child. And I'll just give you a little warning. If any children are um, listening to this right now, turn the volume down so they don't hear because it was quite naughty. So my sister and I were good little girls always. But one Christmas, I have no idea what possessed us. We shared a room and mom and dad um, had told us very strictly that we were not to wake them up till eight o'clock. Well, we, of course, woke up very early, but this year we sneaked out of our beds and we went into the living room and we got our Christmas socks. We took them back into our bedroom, put them on our bed, and we opened up every single gift in those socks, just the two of us, with um, careful so that we could 
reseal them afterwards. So, you know, we'd open it up and go, ooh, ah, and then we'd wrap it back up and put it back in the sock. So we opened up every one of them. And then we, when we were finished, we sneaked them back out into the living room and mom and dad, if they knew, they never said a word. And we only did it once, but it was this little secret between my sister and I. Um, the second memorable Christmas that I, I want to recall was when I was a teenager and we owned a camp at that time and we decided that year to go to camp for Christmas. So it was an old fashioned Christmas. First of all, you can't drive to our camp and um, it's very rare that the water freezes well enough, but that year it froze early. So we were able to go over to the camp on snowmobile. We had to take everything in, of course stoke up the fire because it was extremely cold but we went out into the forest and cut down our tree which was something we didn't do if you recall in the last episode I was allergic to trees but hey for one year we we stuck it through so we cut down our tree then we made our decorations we popped popcorn and strung it in cranberries all the old-fashioned ways and um, brought in the gifts and it was just a tremendous um, old fashioned time, just the four of us together, my sister, my mom and dad and I, and uh, just something that we talk about even to today. And my last one was when I was an adult and married and my sister was newly married as well. She and her husband live down in Southern Ontario. We live here in Northern Ontario. And then my mom and stepdad were living on Manitoulin Island. And we, we were to go there for Christmas. On this particular Christmas, though, the weather was horrendous. I mean, full blizzard. We headed out not knowing if we would make it to Manitoulin. And we had, you know, only a couple hours to drive. My sister, coming from Southern Ontario, had a horrendous drive. Actually, they were closing down 401 behind her. The police were. The roads was, were being closed, and they were the last vehicle to get through. We stopped for gas and just to recover and have a little break from the from the drive when we got to um, the turnoff to Espanola, which heads in num on number six highway to the Manitoulin Island. We stopped there for gas. And lo and behold, I mean, my sister had drive, driven from Southern Ontario. We had driven from Sudbury. And they were there at the exact same time getting gas, <laughs> which was, it astounds me. So we, together, as a convoy, so to speak, followed each other to the island, to my mom's, through this blinding snowstorm, how we stayed on the road, I don't know. But what was the special thing was, we get to my mom's, and it was like being transformed into another world. I mean, it was chaos outside. And then we entered that door into their, their home. And the soft glow of the Christmas lights was on. There was Christmas music playing in the background. It was warm and cozy from the fire. Mom had, you know, had um, the meal on. So there was the smell of the food. And it was just so surreal going from this, you know, tremendous um, snowstorm outside into this welcoming, warm um, home. And it it just is one of my special memories to look back on. Um, one of the memories I really enjoyed is when, uh, and like you, Bonnie, if little ones are listening, turn the volume down. <laughs> um, I remember Danielle we had the kind of an old fashioned house in Capriol and you had that back summer kitchen on it. And both our children's bedroom windows looked over the summer kitchen roof. So my husband thought it would be a good idea to sneak out the window, draw two lines in the snow and add some like carrots and bits and stuff as if the, the, the Santa's reindeer landed and uh, but he didn't want his footprint so he dove off the side into the snow and I'm going lovely memories but don't kill yourself and sure enough the kids looked out the window in the morning to see that Santa had landed on their roof which uh, was a treat because they they just carried that for so many years but I carried the tradition <laughs> in a safer way uh, with my grandkids, because what I do is do this little 
bag. Um, you know how you buy the bags at the dollar store and it has reindeer on it. And no, I didn't give them reindeer poop people. That was from last time. <laughs> this time what I do is I do oatmeal with uh, glitter in it. And the little poem that I put with that one is sprinkle on the nut sprinkle on the lawn at night the moon will make it sparkle bright as santa rangers fly and roam they will guide them to your home and my grandkids always loved going christmas eve and sprinkling the the glowing you know oatmeal on the lawn so we we it's safer people it's safer nobody getting hurt okay <laughs> I have visions of the Santa Claus movie, you know, when he fell off the roof, when, when you shared that story about your husband. <laughs> that was pretty well, thank goodness. It was pretty, um, pretty deep because he landed in the snow, <laughs> but there was no track. So the kids really believed it landed and then was gone. I have a funny story related to Santa and our family too. And when you mentioned Colette about um, one of your favorite memories, bringing home your son on Christmas day, uh, we also brought home Josh on Christmas day and he was, he came home in a stocking. So it was fun. Um, but one of uh, the funny memories with Josh we uh, came to know the Lord when the kids were very small and we thought, okay, the most important thing is um, Jesus, you know, so we thought we're quite content for the kids to go along with, you know, Santa and traditions and all of that. But as soon as they start asking questions, we thought we want to tell them the truth because uh, we thought in our minds, if we tell them about Santa and we, you know, um, just maintain that that's true, then later on, when they are asking questions about Jesus uh, and we say, yes, that's true, then, um, you know, they may question uh, what we are, what we have been telling them. So we thought as soon as our children ask the question about Santa, we were going to tell them the truth. So for Josh, who has been very curious ever since uh, he was young, it was, I believe he was going to kindergarten and uh, he was asking the question, started asking the question. Um, and so we said, okay, it's time to tell him the truth. So we told him that it's a story, a wonderful story that's based on a real person whose name was Nicholas or St. Nicholas. And St. Nicholas was very kind and gave um, things like oranges and things like that to people, whether they were good or bad. He just gave them to the people who needed it. <clears throat> and he did that uh, for years and then he died. And uh, the today, the story of Santa Claus is based on his life. Um, but it's it's a story, a fun story for children. So we thought we did a good job. Uh, we heard about a week later, our son came home from kindergarten and told the story about he explained to the kids that Santa was dead. <laughs> <laughs> And how the teacher managed that uh, in a very careful way. Uh, so Josh was asking us questions. So who's right? You know, the teacher said this. So what's right? And uh, so we had to very carefully explain, you know, the truth again, but that other children still want to believe 
and parents want them to have that fun. So that's why the teacher answered the way she did. So we just kind of thought, oh, dear. But after that, of course, our kids knew there was no Santa very early on because Josh um, finds it it's his job to, you know, break all of the uh, the bubbles and and tell the truth, no matter the age of the kids. So that kind of disappointed my parents because they thought that our kids missed out on the fun. But that was our reasoning and uh, we'll never forget it. And it, it's legendary these days when, you know, we say, remember when Josh came home from kindergarten and told the story that he told the kids Santa's dead. Carolyn, I so can relate because when Amy came home and uh, I guess somebody, maybe she went to school with Josh because when Kate, Amy came home and she said, mommy, is Santa real? And I said, honey, Mommy's never lied to you, right? Right. Do you want the answer? And she walked away. <laughs> and I said, good for you. Because like you, Carol Ann, when I was little, my brother thought it would be educational to show me where our Christmas gifts were. And I saw everything I was getting for Christmas. And I wanted to believe in Santa so much that I thought, oh, he must have been sick and sent them ahead of time. <laughs> oh, I think we all have stories like that. And I, I have two. So I have two stories that go along with that. Number one, when I was little, and I mean, I was pretty innocent and naive. And so I think it was like grade four before I heard someone at school say there was no such thing as Santa. And I went home and I was devastated, you know, that there would be no Santa. And so my mom, she suggested to me to write a letter to Santa that year and ask him if he was real. So I did. I left a letter for Santa with the cookies and the milk and asked, you know, whole, wholeheartedly, like, do you really exist? The kids are at school are saying there's no Santa. And my mom, I found out later, it was my mom, wrote back this beautiful little note. And it would talked about, I think I even have the note somewhere. It talked about the magic of Christmas. And as long as you had the magic in Christmas, Santa was alive. Of course, we didn't, we weren't believers at that time in my life, but it was so beautiful. I hung on to that. And, um, I wasn't disappointed anymore in finding out that Santa wasn't real. Now, fast forward, um, when I had my son, I was Christian. So I had the same desire as you, Carol Ann, and you, Colette, you know, not to lie and, and to tell the truth. So right from the get-go, um, we told our son that there, you know, this was a lovely tradition and people carried this on, but that um, Santa wasn't real right now. He wasn't a living person. And we also told him, you know, you can't tell the other boys and girls at school because they still believe in Santa. So we have to keep this a secret. And I can tell you, he didn't tell anybody. He, he knew for himself, you know, and um, we always had gifts and, you know, the, some family members gave him gifts from Santa and he knew it, but he never ever told somebody else and ruined the surprise for him. And to this day, my son is the best secret keeper you could ever want. If you ask him to not divulge something, he will not. So I maybe it came from that. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> just three different takes on a really interesting story about is there a Santa or not? Thank you, ladies, for sharing those. I remember when I had the nativity scene up. And I had um, a little one come to the house and they were touching the nativity scene. And their, their mother and dad were kind of concerned they were going to break it and said, don't touch. And I remember my husband, like when they left, I said, everybody should be able to touch Jesus. And my birthday was coming up. 
So he said, what did I want for my birthday? And I said, I want a little tight nativity scene. And I always put it up, always, always, because everybody should be able to touch Jesus. And it became a tradition in our family with the grandkids, because what we do is we take Jesus on Christmas morning and we hide Jesus because he's the greatest gift. And we look for Jesus first. And I still hear Abby going, Jesus, where are you? Jesus, where are you? I have a little video. Where is he, Abigail? I found him. Had a girl. Whoa. Who'd you find? Good girl. Who'd you find? He was hiding. He was hiding. Baby Jesus, where'd you put him now? Put him on here. But um, they know. And I mean, they're 12 and 9 now. And they still look for Jesus before they open any gift. It's just us focusing. What we would do on Christmas too, is we would get a birthday cake, a birthday cake. And we would bring it out and sing happy birthday. And we've had company at our table going, whose birthday is it? And then when we rounded off of happy birthday to you, Jesus, then they clue in that it's his birthday. So we did things that I guess because of kids church and me, I've always tried to make it simple to focus on, you know, the true meaning of Christmas. And yeah, they get spoiled. I and mean, you know, what grandparent doesn't spoil the kids under the tree, but they still look for Jesus first. And they did it last year. And I'm hoping they do it this year. I love that. We hope that you've enjoyed some of the memories and traditions that we've had in our lives. Maybe you'll take some of them and um, develop them into your own family. But if you have something that you'd like to share with the viewers and with us, please put it in the comments below, or you can write us at recoveringyourvoice at gmail.com. Now we won't be able to see, we, see you again until 2023. We hope that you'll join us for our debut in that year with a special happy new year um, episode but until then keep sharing your stories yeah your color is better what did you do different can i hear you caroline i didn't hear you yet Hi, how is that Hi. sounding? There we go. We're all good. Okay. okay. <laughs> Welcome to Recovering Your Voice. Christmas. Shorts. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do that again? Here comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa Claus. <laughs> so, bibbity bobbity boo, <clears throat> bibbity bobbity bee. Is it on me yet? Bibbity bobbity me. Okay. <laughs> Bibbity bobbity boo. Uh, uh, the uh, I'm trying to remember the name now, but um, <clears throat> okay, guys, help me out here. And we used to do uh, a cake. And sorry, let's try that again. Sorry, Bonnie. Clean up an aisle four. <laughs> Did I disappear? Okay. You just yeah. was like Santa. You disappeared up. Yeah. Up, up the, <laughs> the chimney. The, up the chimney <laughs> I go. <laughs> those were great. I so enjoyed hearing all of those. And it was fun. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah. Yes.